Hi there everyone. Quick intro for this uh, video. Bruce has kindly sent me some files from testing his ATN Excite 4K scope. He initially got the 3 to 14 times, then he traded that in, upgraded to the 5 to 20 times. So this video is entirely impartial. It's his own opinion, unsponsored of course as usual. His findings, because he's very, very experienced in using night vision and day night scopes. I visited him in his man cave a few weeks ago. At that point, he had the 3 to 14 times uh, ATN X sight scope. And he's then since traded that in to get upgrade to the 5 to 20 times. You'll see the results of, uh, of that yourself. So before we get to Bruce's footage, we have his review in his man cave, recorded by me. And I was uh, holding my holding my microphone, hello, holding my microphone out for him so that I was seated from my back and uh, you can hopefully hear what he what he's saying. I might play with the volume levels a little bit so it, to make him clearer. Um, okay, hope you like the video. Hi everyone, it's uh, Russ Douglas 222 again. Just a couple of hours after we, uh, we just recorded the new Edge scope from Custom Hunting, I'm gonna video Bruce's opinions and thoughts he bought himself a second-hand ATN, 4K scope, 3 to 14. So basically this is his first observations, having used it a little bit. This is partly a review, and in Bruce having bought this second-hand scope to see, see what it's like. And it's partly a comparative review, because Bruce and I have obviously both got PADS, uh, 008 LRFs. Bruce is naturally going to be comparing how this compares side-by-side -side with the PAD. The view both through the uh, eyepiece and recorded internally. So I'll just go and go over it without further ado and uh, record some Bruce. So here we are, Bruce, this rifle, I have to say straight away, this rifle, uh, this is in Bruce's garage. The rifle has no ammo on it. There is no bolt. So there's no ammunition within, you know, a mile of here. So uh, it's just what we, we, he's not gonna take the, the scope off the rifle right now because it's been zeroed. And he's gonna be out tonight bagging some bunnies with this fella. So that's your, is that your Tika, Bruce? That's it? a Tika T1X in 2-2 long rifle with a short barrel, a 16 inch barrel. Um, Excellent. And, and uh, it's got the, it's now, got, it's now wearing this ATN X Site 4K 3-14. Now, <laughs> the, the reason I bought this is, it might sound a bit perverse because I've not, never been a big fan of the ATNs. Right. Uh, they, is anybody who's ever seen any of my postings in the forum will know that I'm I've got a not a great relationship with ATN. I bought one of the very first X sites and it was a total disaster. In fact it's so bad I've got it in my shed I would never sell it to anybody because I would never want to give that to anybody. However um the X site 4K has been quite popular. Some people like it and it would be unfair of me to criticize it without actually trying it myself. So right. I put my Fair hand news. in my pocket, bought a second hand one I bought the 3 to 14 because it's more likely to be used on rabbits rather than long range stuff. Um, I've changed the mounts from those that come with it to a set of Hawk mounts that are a, a better set of mounts but are very, very, very flush fitting underneath. So this is, that's the body of the scope is almost touching that part of the mount there. But you can see it's a nice height above the, the rifle, there's not too much scope's not too high and with this stock I can raise a cheap piece anyway. First impressions of the X site compared to the pad are its size and its weight. It's big and it's heavy okay um, and we don't have the sunshade on at the front right I'm not even going to fit it and we don't have the rubber eyepiece at the back so with the eyepiece on and the sunshade on it's longer than my arm. <laughs> and if you, if I just leave that there just now, yep. just for a side by side. Here's a pad 008 LRF. A bit different, a bit smaller, a bit lighter. And of course, the pad has got a built in onboard illuminator and a built in rangefinder. The X site has neither. If you want to use the X site at night, you have to put an illuminator, illuminator on it. Uh -huh. And the illuminator that comes with it 
this little LED illuminator. Uh, because Russ is recording this for YouTube, I'm not going to use the word to describe it I might normally use because it may get demonetized. Let's just say it's not very good. <laughs> and it also takes about 10 turns to get it to go from flood to spot. So it's not exactly a quick illuminator to get from flood to spot. Okay. So we ain't going to be using that. Um, what I'm actually going to use tonight is this. This is a an illuminator made by one of the members of the Night Vision Forum, a boy called Dave, also known as Some Bloke Dave. Oh, by the way, I should mention, I'll put a link down below to the UK Night Vision Forum, okay. and it's where you'll find Bruce and myself, and uh, there'll be lots, all the up-to-date discussions about UK Night Vision gear, thermal and, and infrared and Night Vision will be on there. So crack on, Bruce. Okay, this is a, a, a very old type of torch, and it's called a 501B. Um, and it, it's got a standard 25mm CCTV lens. It's got a VCSEL illuminator in it. So it's but it's a small, lightweight illuminator. I don't want to add any more weight than I have to to this thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I've got to, I had to use a slight. I have to use a riser here to get that high enough up above the top of the objective lens. But I've tried this on my range here, and it's it it does okay. It's fine. Um, as for the X site itself. The image is is quite good. It's I would say the colours are slightly washed out compared to the part. Mm -hmm. Um not quite as contrasty as the part, but perfectly acceptable. It's got a nice reticle, really nice sharp reticle. Um the focus adjust is at the front, it's an adjustable objective, which is the same as the part. You have to adjust the lens in the part. So you can put a coaster on that. You could put a coaster on it, but it does have a little finger knobby thing but it, okay. it, which is which makes it reasonably easy okay um digital zoom is just by turning the side wheel okay because that's clearly an advantage over the part the part is you know it's six and a half or 13 and with the pip doubled up again so you can go right down to three times zoom. three and then increase in steps of point one and you can actually go right up to about times 37 or something but that level of magnification you're not getting much detail it's pretty blurry mm. um, and because this is a 3 to 14 the the image pixelates quite quickly so even at times 14 the image is nothing like as good as the part is at times 13 right okay okay um, the usual details I can see with the part at times 13 are completely blurred out now if this had been the the ATN 5 to 20 with mm. a higher base magnification that might have been a better comparison because the base magnification is closer to what the part base magnification is. So yeah. the the image at times 13 with the 5 to 20 ATN would be better than this and would be less pixelated. Yeah, one of the guys on uh, from Sportsman Gun Center who was speaking to the other day um, was saying that the ATN is more of a rib fire scope, but I'm assuming he was meaning the 5 to 20. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Yes, I would say so. Um, th th this is the 3 to 14, um, given the quality of the image, th this is this is an air gun, fairly short range scope. I mean, a rimfire scope as well. Yes, yeah, so FAC, air gun, F air gun, FAC, air gun, rimfire. and rimfire. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, center fire scope, eh, you're pushing it a bit. Yeah, I'm just going to stand up for a second and get a few close ups. So, so this, this wheel basically gives you instant control over the digital zoom. Uh, the menu buttons. The menu, power button at the top. The middle button is the menu button. It brings up the menu. Okay. Uh, and allows you to make various changes. The left button gives you, one press of that takes one still image. Mm -hmm. The right button switches the recording on and switches the recording off. Uh, and the back one I think is to do with zeroing. <laughs> I haven't really played with it. Uh, what does that do? Oh, it's the it's the stadiometric rangefinder. Oh right, okay. Which you've then got to like place a target over yeah, arrow over the target, arrow under the target and yeah. it comes up with a range. Never use that. No. Uh but you have managed to zero this on this, I, this I've, rifle. I've zeroed it uh, at sixty yards and um I'm happy with the zero. Mm -hmm. It's I put I putting four I put four or five two two bullets into an inch at at uh, sixty yards, which okay. is I'll just, Bruce showed me this earlier, so I'll just show you this 
I know I'm not a particularly good shot. I mean, the so that target down there is Bruce's happy zero. So they're all, all the shots are within an inch at 60 yards. That's CCI subsonics. Um, so I mean, the, the, it's a it's a nice fine reticle. I do I really do like. It's a t I've got a T-shaped reticle with a floating center. I don't know if you can come in and see that. All oh, right. Okay. I'll um, I'll come around the other way. And um, I do I do like. There's a selection of reticles, but this this one happens to be one I like, and a selection of colors as well. Much wider choice of reticles and colors than there is. You need you need to come back a bit. Hang on. Oh, we're getting some flicker there. Oh, let me let me switch the lights off here. Let me have no, no, no. You're getting. Yeah, uh, that's the that's the frequency of my phone clashing with the, the frequency, frequency of the the, the display. Yeah. yeah. The one thing that this scope does have that I've not seen on other scopes that use digital displays is it's got proper eye relief. Okay. So for for me to get a full image of the display, this is this is where my eye has to be. Excellent. Okay. And that's quite that's a long way. I mean, that's much longer. If this was a pard, I'd be right in here. Yep. And if it was a pulsar, you'd be way back, but you'd have a tiny little that's right. image. If if I use the rubber tube thing here, right, and I use that, I'm still looking through a tunnel. I have to I have to push in against that. Yeah. So that doesn't help me really in any way at all. Right. So, but if I'm if I'm there. If I'm there, I'm, I'm perfect. I'm seeing all four corners of the display perfectly in focus. Excellent. And that's, you know, that's what, about three inches probably? Uh, yeah, yeah two, so, three inches. So, that, so that's that's good. I mean, it's gone in a rim fire, so you don't have to worry about re uh, recoil anyway. So you, mm. you could have your eye closer and not have to worry about it. But yeah. it looks to me like it was designed to have a reasonable amount of eye relief so you could use it on a higher power, mm. power rifle. So, but I, so I actually quite I do quite like the the eye relief on it. Um, it's it's more relaxing. The but with the part when you're you almost any scope with a digital screen where you're having to push your eye quite in close, it does get quite tiring after a while. Mm. So this is a bit more relaxing. However, the big question, of course, with this is how is it going to perform at night? Mm -hmm. And hopefully tonight we'll get out and shoot some rabbits, and we'll see then. You're right. Daytime, um, day for daytime use. I do, I do again a bit like the edge scope. I would use this on rabbits um, out to about well again it's a rim fire. You're not going to shoot huge distances with it, but I mean it'd be good good enough for rabbits during the day. Um, whether I'd, on a higher powered rifle, if I, on a higher powered rifle, I'd probably go for the higher scope, the higher magnification version of this. Right, the, the five to twenty. 20. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and one thing I noticed when you show me. Um, last briefly, you showed me the scope when you first got it. Um, I was thinking this was a three to fourteen by fifty, but when you look at the <laughs> you look at the objective lens, it's a massive objective lens, but you've got a, a tiny, a tiny like a, a twenty mil, like a huge opening. black collar, and yeah. only a little bit of glass in the middle. Yeah, so it's not yeah. basically there's a the, inside this collar here, there is computer hardware. And yeah, I I I I think the sensor is between sort of here and here. Right. Um, given and the, given what the focal length probably is. Yeah, and so it's not like that. This is a, a massive objective lens to gather no. available daylight or IR light. No. It's no. If you if you look if you look at the five to twenty, the only difference is that this section here is longer. Right. Okay. Because it's obviously got a longer focal length to get the mag extra magnification, and probably or hopefully a bigger lens. Yeah. Um, but that's the only difference. Everything from there back is the same in both scopes. Right. Okay. And in fact, you, when you go into the menu, you have to tell it which model you're on. Oh right. Fourteen or five to twenty. So then it, that sets the maximum magnification you can dial in. Oh right. Um, that's curious. Well, it, well, that's what that's how it is. Um, another, but. I'll, I have to say, it's something it did, and I only noticed this when I zeroed it. Um, the When I got the rifle zeroed, um, the zeroing menu is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't freeze the screen like the pad, but it puts another reticle on the screen, yeah. which remains at your point of aim mm -hmm. while you adjust the reticle to your point of impact. Mm -hmm. And I did that, and I had to move the reticle a reasonable distance. But when, so when I finished the zeroing process with this white 
cross on the screen which was on my point of aim and I've now got the reticle moved to my point of impact mm -hmm. clearly my reticle is not in the center of the screen mm -hmm. but when I saved the settings and came out of the zeroing menu the reticle had moved back to the center of the screen which, which is, is nice which is nice so that's but what that what that tells me is that this is a 4k sensor uh -huh. in here I'm not using all of the 4k no and I think actually there's, we'll, a, there's a lot wasted so that you can censor things I, th I think what's happening is and remember, remember that and and I think a couple of other youtubers have picked this up that only records in full HD it doesn't record in 4k right it's a 4k sensor but it only records in HD full HD and the the display is less than full HD right so what I think they're doing is they've got this 4k sensor but they're not they're basically using that to allow you to move the reticle where you want yeah when you get zeroed and then using whatever using the the reticle as the centering point mm -hmm. and then creating an image a, a full HD image around that point yeah because you've got so many pixels to available yeah so there's so, waste there's wasted 4k pixels oh, I, I, around I, the outside I, I might be wrong with that that's my assumption given the fact that the, the reticle was able to move from quite a way down and right back into the middle of the screen yeah how are they, they can only do that by moving using using unused pixels yeah using available space yeah that's right in, in the same way that on some scopes when you go into digital zoom the reticle will jump back to the center because there's no available pixels to allow it to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think they're touting this is a 4K scope and they're, I'm sure they're absolutely truthful in saying it's got a 4K sensor, but they ain't creating the image using all 4K pixels. No. I think mm -hmm. they're only using It's a heck of a, it's a, it's a, well, it's nice that it's centered. I like that a great deal. Yes. <laughs> I can live with it. Yeah. I have spotted something, by the way, Bruce. Remember, you know, with my, you know, the PAR 008 LRF, mm -hmm. which I've got one of these on both of my non-FAC and FAC air rifles. Um, something I've noticed, my, I'm not quite, you know, we've got your M3 drilled and tapped shim mm -hmm. at the back. Mm -hmm. And I could do with taking the part off and adjusting it maybe to nearer 1.1 one, one, 1. 1 mil. It's about 0.9 of a mil at the moment. But one thing I've noticed, I like to have the pip enabled. So you press the red laser button and the pip pops up. Mm -hmm. So basically, the red laser is not used use anymore, uh -huh. which is great. Mm -hmm. Don't want a laser coming on accidentally. But also, when the pip comes on in the top sort of 25% of the screen, I'm quite happy that I've my, my crosshair Result is slightly, lower. slightly yeah, low of center. Yeah, 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 because it's almost like top 25% for the pip, Mm -hmm. And the remaining seventy-five mm -hmm. percent, my crosshair is in the middle of that. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. That's a very I'm, fair I'm, point. I'm, I'm quite happy with well, that. Well, yeah, yeah. If you if you if you use a pip a lot, and, that, and certainly when I have the pard out, I often use the pip as well. That's a, that's a fair point. Some people like to have the reticle. Of... No, no, no. Some people like to have their IR aiming slightly above centre, mm. so they don't get as much quite out at the bottom of much, the screen. Much reflection. You're, you're yeah. missing, you, you tend to miss the close-in vegetation that causes white out. Yeah. So have the aim, the aim, the... So if, if you do that and you had the reticle slightly higher, mm -hmm. then you could centre up without having to, to worry so much about white out from the bottom, you know, vegetation at the bottom of the screen. But your point about the pip is well made, yeah. This doesn't have pip. Right, okay. This doesn't have... It's got a load of other stuff that I've switched off, like... The equivalent of the gyroscope and a lot of gubbins that I'll never use, so that got switched off right away. Um, it doesn't have it, that the illuminator's rubbish, it doesn't have a rangefinder. If you buy the ATN, it's the ABL rangefinder, the call mm -hmm. it clamps onto the side here and communicates with the scope via Bluetooth. Yeah, um, the time you do that, and the time you put a decent illuminator on it, you need a bear off the car of the gun, <laughs> it's big and heavy. <laughs> yeah, this, this is entirely a truck gun. I ain't going to walk about with this gun over my shoulder, right? <laughs> this is a gun for shooting rubbish out the truck. Yeah. Because I can just basically plant it on the window ledge, and it's nice and stable then, and I can shoot shoot quite happily. But just putting a sling on it and carrying it about, forget it. I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll get a pard, I'll put this back in its original stock, and then I'll walk about with it. Yeah. But that's too heavy a setup for walking about for me. Yeah. I'm an old man, you know. I don't like the, the walk. Hey, well... Carry, Heavy stuff. 
<laughs> I, I, I like to think I'm not an old manny, but still the pad is the manageable one for me because oh, it's just it's just practicalities. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pragmatic. Mm-hmm. I cannot physically carry a scope this big or this heavy on my rifle. It's I can I can completely understand that. I mean, this is this is this must have a fairly big battery in it. Mm. Because they're reckon 15 hours continuous. Okay, it's not running in aluminum, it's only running the electronics and the mm-hmm. screen. Um, I, I There's a battery display and it's almost fully charged. I actually plugged it into the charger. It plugs, it charges via a USB-C connector mm-hmm. in there and it comes, with a, it comes with a charging cable, which the other end is standard USB. Yeah. And I've got one of these little, little adapters that plugs in uh, to the USB power source and it tells you how many volts and how many amps is actually being drawn and it wasn't that badly down on charge it was about three quarters charged and i plugged it in and it was pulling almost one and a half amps for charging which is which indicates to me that it's a pretty big battery mm. um so i'm thinking there's so, a lot that there's a lot of battery in here and in here yeah so there's a, that's a lot of this weight might be battery it's quite probable yeah mm-hmm. now okay. <clears throat> uh, if you if you're going to get a lot of time out of it, so you wouldn't need to charge it every night you go out. No. And and but if you do get caught with no with no battery, then it's going to be a while before you get it charged up and be able to use it. Yeah. Again, well, the advantage of the part is you just carry a couple of spare batteries in your pocket and away you go. Small light batteries, one yep. eight six fifties, yep. and that, that's yep. yeah. Yep. So <clears throat> pros and cons. Yeah. One thing I would say one one con of the part is. I have to remember to look in the bottom right hand corner of my display when the battery gets down to one bar. Everything still works fine. Oh, yeah. But I have to remember <clears throat> when I look back at the recording from, from my YouTube channel, I get interference, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. when it gets really low and you put the uh, LRF on. Yeah. Then it, it picks up a lo- then it picks up a lot of interference. Yeah. So you won't have that with this. The, the, uh, maybe, I, I mean, given what people are, not my experience with the pod, but given what a lot of people say about the pod, the not holding zero and the mount being rubbish and all that sort of stuff, this this is solidly mounted. Yeah, this is this that, is that's not going anywhere. I would I would doubt very much if you would have any issues with this losing zero. So that's a big plus for the ATM. So that 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 would be a, a confidence booster for people using the ATM. And and this has got con- conventional thirty mil tube, tube conventional yeah. thirty mil yeah. scope mounts. Yeah, yeah. Well, not quite conventional. That you've got. To get this back far enough, even with the big eye relief, you still need that offset mount to get right, so the. Uh, Bruce has got a reach back yeah. hawk mount here. But the but the part but the ATN comes with a, a reach back. Right. But it's it's not very good. Right. Uh, okay. And it also throws the scope up a bit higher as well. Okay. Uh, so you heard it here first. So thanks very much to, for Bruce's time and for the uh, for showing us around the. ATN X Site 4K that he bought himself, the second hand one. So Bruce is going to supply some footage from daylight and from tonight when he's out on the bunnies with uh, with Paul. Keep an eye on the UK Night Vision Forum for more and on my channel and uh, lots more to come. So uh, thanks very much. Signing off from the Man Cave. Just to explain quickly, Bruce uploaded day and night footage that he recorded using his usual 100 yard benchmark to a distant neighbor's roof line. He, he's edited this, combined the footage into sort of upper and lower portion with the pad at the top and the ATN 4K underneath. But uh, my OCD kicked in when I, when I watched the footage this morning. Ah! So as you know from my other older videos, the pad from what you see in the screen, in the, the viewfinder, four to three ratio, by the time the, the pad records it to the micro SD card, it stretches things to 16 by nine. Um, both, are, both are HD, but one is distorted. So circles are no longer circular. So I corrected the pad footage in the upper half to proper uh, ratio. And obviously Bruce's editing is still there, so what, what you'll see in the video is Bruce's footage using the center portion of the pad footage in the top half and the center foot portion of the ATN footage in the lower half of the screen. And the pad footage has been reverse stretched a little bit by me to get it to four to three, as you, exactly as you would see in the eyepiece. And you'll see, if you notice on the left hand side, roughly here on the screen, oh, actually, It'll be roughly 
here on the screen, I think. And you'll see the angle of the neighbor's roof is the same between the pod footage and the ATN footage. Distortion corrected. There's four five second clips to start with. The pod raw footage, daylight, then corrected. The pod nocturnal footage, daylight, then corrected. And then Bruce's compilation starts. This is going to be a video comparison between the ATN X Site 4K Pro in 5 to 20 magnification and a PARD NV008, which has a base magnification nominally of times 6.5, but which in fact is actually a base magnification of times 8. I'm recording audio on, and video on, on the ATN and video on the PARD. At the moment, they're both set up and looking at the ridge line of a house about 100 yards away with an air brick on the top. And at the moment you'll see that the magnification of the pad is significantly higher and the field of view of the pad is narrower than that of the X site. So it's not fair to make a direct comparison when they've got different magnifications. So the first thing we're going to do is actually adjust the magnification on the X site so that the field of view on both scopes is the same. And the quick way to do that is simply to move a little bit to the right here and we'll look at this house, the roof of this house and as you can see along the ridge line of that house there are some vertical straps and we're simply going to count the number of straps we can see in the field of view of each scope. So if I start with the X site and set it up there I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 straps. And if I do the same thing for the pad can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, just under 8. So I need to adjust the magnification on the X site so that I can see the same number of straps as I can see with the pad. So I'm going to increase the magnification and from knowledge and experience I know that it's going to be at times 8. And now if I look at the ridge line with the X site I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7.5 to 8. So now the both scopes are at the same magnification. So let's go back to look at our original target, which is that air brick on the roof about 100 yards away. So let's compare, visu visually compare the image on the pad with the image on the X site. Okay, and I hope this comes through in the video. But for me, the image in the pad is superior. It's got more contrast, sharper, and better colour. And those are the three things probably most important about the image. I find the the image on the X site lacking in detail. I cannot make out the individual holes in the air brick and the roof to any great extent. Whereas in the pad I can do that. I can see the holes on the air brick, I can see the gaps between the holes. And at the left on the edge of the air brick I can see two small dark marks. On the X site no, I just simply can't make out the, the breaks between the holes um, and it's just not a sharp an image. What I'll do now is I'll increase the magnification of the pad up to digital times 2. And increase the magnification of the X site to 16. Because that's going to be double the pad. And I still can't make out the air brick holes in the X site image at all clearly. Whereas in the pad, I can see them as clear as day. So for me, the pad is absolutely a clear winner here. And of course, the pad's got this extra little trick of picture in picture, which doesn't come through in the video, but with the, with the picture in picture mode, I'm essentially at times 32 magnification. So if I put the 
exit up to about that same level. Okay, 30.71, I'm going to fight a little bit about that. The image is now starting to be really pixelated, we're losing detail. You can see a sort of shimmer, or I can see a shimmer in the image, whether that will come through in the video, I don't know. And if I look at picture and picture in the part, yes, there is a little bit of shimmer, but the detail level is much, much greater than it is on the X side. So, certainly in daytime, for me, the PARD is a clear winner. And that surprises me a little bit, because the X site's got a 4K sensor in it. You know, it's got all these, it's got, whereas the PARD has a, a full HD sensor, so essentially... The X site has a sensor with four times as many pixels as the pad has. So you would think that the X site should have a sharper image. And it quite simply doesn't. So what we're going to do now is going to switch off now and we'll um, come back out later on when it's dark and try both scopes with um, the illuminator supplied with the X site, with the pads on board the illuminator and with an external illuminator. Um, that I normally use when I'm out shooting. So, we'll try that then. <coughs> okay, we're back again with the x 4K Pro 5-20 and the PARD NV008 for a little bit of testing after dark. I should say that for our previous test I had some fairly severe issues with the x with it crashing. It took seven attempts before the daytime video was possible either because it crashed during the video or froze at some point getting ready to make the video so at the moment the x site is not um, showing itself very well in terms of reliability however we'll try it now in the dark and at the moment i'm recording on both the X site and the pad, and we don't have any illumination on. We're looking at exactly the same place as we were earlier on. We're looking at the the, the roof of a house about 100 yards away with an air brick on it. Um, so we'll see how the each scope does um, looking at that using different illuminators. And we're going to start out using the illuminator supplied with the X site, which is an LED based illuminator. And I'm going to I'm going to switch that on now to full power, and it's already at its tightest beam. Okay, so that's the LED based illuminator supplied with the X site at full power and on its tightest beam. Um, and if you compare the image on the X site and the pad, I'll bring the X site up to the X site is at times eight, so both scopes are on the same magnification. Neither Im image is particularly good. Um, Pars probably got a bit more contrast to it. The X site is a bit soft. Um, there's not a great deal of definition there. We're going to switch the uh, illuminator, the LED based illuminator that comes with the X. I'm going to switch it off now. And I'm going to switch on the illuminator that's built into the pad, the Vixel based illuminator built into the pad. It's also in its tightest boat focus, and I'm going to bring it up to its maximum power, so it's a straight comparison. And the image in the X site is better than it was, it's still soft and kind of foggy, it doesn't look that clear. Whereas the X site image, the PARB image is, is quite sharp. Um, I cannot make out the individual brick air holes in the air brick. Um, it's not as clear as it is in daytime, but the X site is again, it's not nearly as good as that. So, again, I have to say the pad is giving the better image. I'll switch the pad illuminator off. I'm now going to switch on um, an illuminator I use for. for uh, shooting myself and it has an adjustable lens in it that allows us to open the beam up to wider than the field of view the pad and down to a very very small tight beam. Okay that's it on full power 
and I'll just show you the, the beam. I can bring the beam in to as tight as that and open it up to the full field of view of the sport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in so I can really concentrate the light on that air brick at the top. If I go any tighter than that, I actually start to fly out a bit. I'm almost as tight as I can go, but about there. And even, and even although that is now a much brighter image, it's not particularly sharp and I still can't see the holes in the air brick. Now if I look at the same image with the pard, I can now just about make out the holes in the air brick. It's much clearer. In fact, it's arguably it's a little bit too bright. And I, for the pad, I could probably bring that back out a bit to about there, which gives me a, a larger illuminated area uh, and a, a pretty good picture at that. That's, that's a damn good picture. Uh, those trees in the background are 180 yards away and they're very clear with the pad. So if you can imagine some sort of target out at that distance, you would get a good image. On the X site, the trees are... Well, I'm going to change the focus on the X site, see if I can make them better. That's a little bit better. Yeah, they're a little bit better now. But again, I'm, I'm very much of the opinion that the, the pad produces a superior image at night and during the day. Um, and if we can't, if I can't get the problems with this X site crashing and freezing sorted out fairly soon, um, I'll be sending it back. I should note that the firmware that's installed in this X site is the version that is current according to the ATN website, so there should actually be no need to download an update. I have done a factory reset, um, which doesn't really seem to have made much difference. It's still crashing, so I'll probably try to download the, the update from the website and install it, even though it's the same version, just to see if it makes things a little bit better. But I think probably I've seen enough to convince me that the pad is better both day and at night.